It's no secret that going into a relationship is signing some sort of unspoken contract, that that relationship has the right to go one way or the other. You're either going to live a fairy tale life with that person, or people, romance, safety, happiness, every good thing that love has to offer, or it's going to end in one way or another. There is no clause in the contract that states things will end amicably, and in that case, you do what I have been prone to do in the past, and burn the very bridge that led you to that relationship in the first place. Break off the rearview mirror, and never look back. But that isn't the case for everyone. I think ultimately it comes down to how the relationship ended, and how large your desire is to keep that person in your life, but a surprising amount of people actually do remain friends with their ex after a relationship screeches to a halt. In a 2017 study done by dating website Match.com, they found that half of men and a slightly smaller 42% of women reported that they'd stay friends with their exes after a breakup. Researchers also pinpointed four reasons participants gave as to why they would stay friends with an ex. Security, practicality, civility, and unresolved romantic desires. Friends or not, there is still that painful post-breakup period before we move on. And as for how quickly that happens, again, that varies. Grief is a very tricky thing. There are no parameters. What takes one person years to get over could take another person days to move on from. The popular understanding, used in shows like Sex and the City and How I Met Your Mother, is that getting over a breakup takes about as half as long as the time you were together. So say for instance the relationship lasted two years. Well, it would take you about one year to get over them. Scientists have conducted actual research trying to give a more concrete timeline for moving on. A 2007 study of 155 undergraduates who had experienced a breakup in the last six months, entitled Addition Through Subtraction, Growth Following the Dissolution of a Low-Quality Relationship, which was put together by Gary W. Lewandowski Jr. and Nicole M. Bizzacco, found that 71% of people who had gone through a recent breakup started to feel better about three months after, while a survey of some 2,000 people in 2017 put the number at six months. For divorces, a 2009 study found that people take roughly 18 months on average to move on. Heidi McBain, a licensed family and marriage therapist, tells MindBodyGreen.com that the timeline totally depends on the individual person and the work that they're doing to come to terms with the breakup, saying, some people get over breakups much faster than others. It's so dependent on the person themselves. And when it comes to a song that really nails the feeling of not being ready to let go, none hit harder than the 2007 chart-topping song by Leona Lewis, Bleeding Love. <laughs> Hello, and welcome on back to Hurting in a Love Song, the show where we take a trip to the past to discover the history of a love song we all know and love. This week, we take it back to the early aughts to look into the life of Leona Lewis and her collaborative effort that led to a smash hit, Bleeding Love. Our next guest is a uh, popular singer-songwriter from uh, London, England, and her debut CD is entitled Spirit. Please welcome the lovely Leona Lewis. We start our story on April 3rd, 1985, in a borough of inner London called Islington. That is where and when we meet up with Afro-Guyanese youth officer Oral Josiah Lewis and his Italian-Irish social worker wife, Maria Lewis, as they welcome to the world a baby girl, Leona Louise Lewis, younger sister to Bradley and future her older sister to Kyle. Growing up in Highbury, Leona went to school at Ambler Primary School in Finsbury Park. As a child, she was fond of music, particularly opera, wishing to one day become a singer herself, with her remembering, when I was really little, I would sit in the back of my dad's car and he'd be playing old school music. He'd turn down the music and turn around and I'd be singing and I'd know all the words, but I didn't even know how to talk. From then on, I've always wanted to be a singer. And when she was five years old, her parents fulfilled her wish by sending her to Sylvia Young Theater School, despite the fact that that it was an expensive institution. Sylvia Young Theater School is well known for being a wheelhouse of talent, including Amy Winehouse, Billy Piper, Dua Lipa, Ella Purnell, Nicholas Holt, Rita Ora, and members of the Spice Girls and S Club 7. From there, she attended the Italia Conti Academy of Theater Arts, which also has some well-known alumni like Russell Brand, Naomi Campbell, Karen Gillan, and Tracy Ullman, moving not long after to the Brit School for Performing Arts and Technology until they could no longer afford to do so, making cutbacks when necessary to help their daughter achieve her aspirations of being a singer. The Brit School is known for some very well-known alumni, including Adele, FKA Twigs, Imogen Heap, Jesse J, Kate Nash, 
Rex Orange County, and Tom Holland. Leona wrote her first full-length song at the age of 12, and while she initially trained in opera, she went on to sing in jazz and blues, eventually leading to pop music, citing Minnie Riperton, Eva Cassidy, and Stevie Wonder as her main influences. After leaving the Brit School at 17, she went full throttle in her attempts at landing a record deal, taking jobs as receptionist at Metropolitan Mortgages and Head and Short Podiatrists, as well as a Pizza Hut waitress, in order to fund the studio sessions needed. Together with producer Marley J. Wills, who she had worked with two years earlier when she was 15 to record a cover of Minnie Riperton's Lovin' You. Lovin' you, it's easy you're beautiful. She put together a demo called Twilight. While the album, almost exclusively comprised of her own compositions, paired with her cover of Lovin' You, did gain her a meeting with Sony Records, it ultimately ended up going nowhere. With her recalling, I tried to secure a record deal by doing things my own way. I worked very hard, but I never managed to land a contract. In 2003, at the age of 18, she landed a lead role as Nala in The Lion King, but an accident while ice skating led to a back injury that crushed those dreams. While Twilight was never released commercially, she did perform a couple of the tracks live on the BBC Radio 1 music station in 2004. Another demo album, Best Kept Secret, was recorded, but like its predecessor, it went nowhere. However, a track from the album, Private Party, became a hit on the underground urban music scene in London in 2005. <laughs> In 2006, with two back-to-back -back duds, she considered taking a hiatus from her music career to attend university. However, fate was not inclined to let that happen, and with a little bit of encouragement from her then-boyfriend, Lou al Chama, more on him later, she auditioned for the third series of The X Factor UK. <laughs> Despite her shy nature, 21-year-old Leona Lewis stood her ground against the panel of judges, who at the time consisted of Simon Cowell, Sharon Osbourne, Louis Welsh, and a guest appearance by Paula Abdul. Her audition was a rendition of Over the Rainbow, pushing her through to the next round with a yes vote from all four judges. Placed in the 16-24 to 24 category, Simon Cowell took her under his wing, and from August to the finale in December of 2006, Leona shined every week with the following songs. <laughs> She became the winner of the third series of The X Factor after raking in 60% of the 8 million votes. Her cover of Kelly Clarkson's song, A Moment Like This, was released on December 17th, 2006. In the UK, it broke a world record after being digitally downloaded more than 50,000 times in less than 30 minutes. Just had some news in on the record, by the way, uh, which is, and I think it is a, a world record, this. We have had in 30 minutes 50,000 downloads. The song became the 2006 UK Christmas number no. 1 single, selling 571,000 copies in its first week, outselling the top 40 combined, which is mad impressive because at the time, in the top 40 were songs like I 
Try to make me go to rehab. I said no, no, no. So don't you ever for a second get to thinking you're a place above. Let's waste time chasing cars. Despite being released so late in December, A Moment Like This became the second best-selling single in the United Kingdom in 2006 behind Does that make me crazy? Her popularity soon spread to the United States, catching the ear of producer Clive Davis, who swiftly claimed the rights to sign her under J Records. Before its disbanding in 2011, J Records had a pretty solid roster of players, including Alicia Keys, Jamie Foxx, O-Town, Pitbull, Rod Stewart, Say Anything, and Busta canonically whooped Michael Myers' ass, Rhymes. Trick or treat, motherfucker. She recorded tracks for her debut album Spirit in London, Miami, Los Angeles, New York City, and Atlanta, where she worked with several songwriters and record producers, including Dallas Austin, Walter Afanasiev, Salim Remy, Steve Mack, Stargate, Cara Diaguardi, and Neo. Between them, they wrote or produced the following songs. Spirit was released on November 9, 2007, and its lead single was for a moment like this. The album itself, propelled by the follow-up single, Bleeding Love, more on that in a bit, was a massive success. It entered both the Irish and UK album charts at number one, becoming the fastest selling debut album in both countries. It was released in the United States in April 2008 and entered the Billboard 200 at number one, making Lewis the first British artist to reach number one with a debut album. It was the fourth best selling album of the 2000s in the UK behind Back to Bedlam by James Blunt, No Angel by Dido, and Back to Black by Amy Winehouse. Alternatively, the album was the sixth best-selling album of 2008 in the world, behind Viva La Vida by Coldplay, Black Ice by ACDC, the soundtrack for Mamma Mia, Rock Fairy by Duffy, and Death Magnetic by Metallica. A spokesman for Leona said, On its first day of sales alone, Spirit sold over 130,000 copies, which was outselling the rest of the top 10 put together. On average, it worked out that Leona was selling about 200 albums per minute. Spirit has since been recognized as the 8th best-selling album of the 21st century in the UK behind 21 by Adele, Back to Black by Amy Winehouse, 25 by Adele, One by The Beatles, Multiply by Ed Sheeran, Back to Bedlam by James Blunt, and Divide by Ed Sheeran. And it's easy to understand why, with this week's topic as its main single. In 2004, preteen and teenage girls were swooning over the back-to-back -back hits by Jesse McCartney, those being He followed that up with a second album entitled Right Where You Want Me, an album which he wrote a majority of the songs himself. So in 2007, while working on his third album, Departure, he teamed up with one Republic frontman, Ryan Teeter, to write a song that Jesse had high hopes for. Ryan Teeter has since become a very well-known producer, most notably for his One Republic songs. However, he did find himself in a bit of hot water in 2009 when he ostensibly produced the same song twice, with Already Gone by Kelly Clarkson and Halo by Beyonce. However, in 2007, Jesse McCartney and Ryan Teeter had conjured up some gold with a song slated for departure entitled Bleeding Love. Teeter recalled to Billboard magazine, Jesse just had a huge hit, Beautiful Soul, and I was going in with him and I felt like I didn't have it. 
I went back to my room and I said, I'm going to be an hour late to the session. What if we just did something simple? I sat in my apartment in West LA and said, what would Prince do? I wanted a song that wasn't simply ear candy, so I combined a hard, gritty drum beat with a beautiful chord sequence. I sang over an organ patch and had an entire verse in the chorus of the song. We finished the song, verses, and choruses that day. Jesse McCartney wrote the song about his longtime girlfriend, actress Katie Cassidy, daughter of singer David Cassidy, with him recalling, I kept thinking about being in love so much that it hurts. I was away from my girlfriend for four months at the time, and I really wanted to just throw in the towel and fly home. I was so in love that it was painful. It was like bleeding. It cut me open. That's how my head was, and that idea really just fit the song. As great as Jesse and Ryan thought Bleeding Love was, Jesse's record label, Hollywood Records, did not like the song. And when Ryan caught wind that Clive Davis and Simon Cowell were looking for a lead single for Leona Lewis, he did some research and found her performances on X Factor, and knew right away that he could retool the song to fit her voice and style. They pitched the song to Cowell, who said it was, quote, the one. Production of the song was held by Teeter, and it was recorded at the record plant in Hollywood, California. Some extremely well-known artists have laid down tracks at the record plant, including B.B. King, Billy Joel, Fleetwood Mac, Cheap Trick, Judas Priest, Danzig, Nine Inch Nails, Hole, Mushroom Head, Lady Gaga, Travis Scott, and Marilyn Manson. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! The single was released in the UK in October 2007, where it sold nearly 220,000 copies in the first week, giving it the biggest first week sales of 2007. In March 2008, Bleeding Love entered the Billboard Hot 100 in America at number 85, and then went on to peak at number one for four non-consecutive weeks. The song became the first track by a female UK artist to reach number one since Kim Wilde's You Keep Me Hanging On in 1987. It was the first time in over 20 years that a British artist had topped the American charts with a song that was written or co-written by a McCartney. Leona Lewis is the third female artist from the UK to have a number one hit with a debut US single, following Petula Clark with Downtown in 1965 and Sheena Easton with Morning Train 9 to 5 in 1981. It became the second single to have three separate turns atop the Hot 100 following Sheik's La Freak in 1979. At the 51st Grammy Awards, the song was nominated for two awards, Record of the Year, along with Chasing Pavements by Adele, Viva La Vida by Coldplay, and Paper Planes by M.I.A., all of which lost out to Alison Krauss and Robert Plant's Please Read the Letter. Bleeding Love was also nominated for Best Female Pop Vocal Performance, along with Love Song by Sarah Bareilles, Mercy by Duffy, I Kissed a Girl by Katy Perry, and So What by Pink all of which lost out to Chasing Pavements by Adele. There are two music videos for Bleeding Love. The first was directed by Melina Matsukas and was filmed in Los Angeles. Melina Matsukas has directed a bunch of well-known videos, including... A second video was filmed in New York City for the U.S. release of Bleeding Love. The treatment for the video was written by Ryan Teeter, and it was directed by Jesse Torero, the director and producer of the 2004 film Soul Plane. After the success of Lewis's version, the song was re-recorded by Jesse McCartney, being included as a bonus track on the international version of his album Departure. <laughs> Now, you'll recall that I mentioned we should talk more about Leona's ex, Lou al and the reason is not a good or admirable one. In 2010, the pair split, and Lou, well, he thought himself to be owed part of her success. His rationale was that he encouraged her to try out for the X Factor. With a friend of Lou's telling the Sun newspaper, he believes he has played a huge role in Leona's success. They have been together for more than 10 years, and he has encouraged her to fulfill her potential. He believes he has the rights of a common law husband. Lou sought out nearly 3 million US dollars and some sort of repayment for his so-called hard work helping her succeed. That hard work being helping her fill out her X Factor forms and encouraging her to audition. Nothing ever came for that except for the fact that she very obviously closed the door on that chapter of her life. Bleeding Love comes in at 104 beats per minute. 
Bleeding love was such a perfect storm of forces coming together to capture what it feels like to be so hung up on someone that you love so deeply that it feels like you're bleeding out on the spot. And it's a wound that takes something truly special to mend. It's why bleeding love is so relatable. We've all had our heart crippled by a vein that we keep on opening and closing. This week's love homework is another song about having your heart just completely decimated to the point that it leaves a hole in your chest. I Appear Missing by Queens of the Stone Age. And that's it, the end of another love song history lesson. If you like what you learned and you'd like to continue learning, subscribe, hit the bell, drop a like below, and join me again Monday for the history of a love song we all know and love. And it's a special one as it's actually the Valentine's Day special. Shifted things around to put an episode out on Valentine's Day. Until next time, remember to keep a band-aid handy. And remember, you heard it in a love song. Keep, 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 keep,